Alfred Wegener proposed a theory in 1912 that the great continents of the Earth had drifted over geological time and were once all joined together in a giant land mass we now call Pangaea. His idea was based on the way the present continents fit neatly together and by the way bands of fossil bearing rocks join up across continents like this. Unfortunately, Wegener was unable to provide a mechanism for this movement and his theory was ridiculed by the scientific community until 1965 when the theory of plate tectonics was published. This proposed that the continents were moved around on great plates driven by convection currents in the hot mantle of the earth. For details, see our related video. Perhaps the most dramatic evidence came from the magnetism of rocks each side of the mid-ocean ridges. When rocks solidify, they become weakly magnetic in the direction of the Earth's magnetic field. However, every few million years, the Earth's magnetic field flips, so the North Magnetic Pole becomes South Pole, and vice versa. And this change is signalled in the rocks. Scientists found that the rocks each side of the mid-ocean ridge were magnetized first in one direction and then in another, like this. Magma solidifies, locking in the magnetism. New magma forms as the plates move apart. The magnetic field reverses. More magma solidifies, locking in the reversed polarity, and so on, creating a pattern that repeats each side of the ridge, with the rocks getting older the further you are from the ridge clear evidence of the ocean moving apart over millions of years. Further evidence came from plotting where Earth's volcanoes and earthquakes were situated. From this map you can see that they form lines around the globe marking out the edges of the great tectonic plates. You get almost all earthquakes and volcanoes at plate boundaries. And finally, we find the great mountain ranges right alongside where two plates are pushing into each other. The Himalaya are being thrust upwards as India moved and is still moving slowly into Asia. And as the Pacific plate is subducted under the Asian plate, the islands of Japan with many earthquakes and volcanoes and the deep ocean trench to the east were formed and are still being formed. We know that new plate material is being formed and these, these, these lithospheric plates on the surface of the Earth are moving around. And that might raise the question in your brain, what happens if we kind of reverse things? We know, we know the direction they're moving in. What does that tell us about where they came from? So let's just do the thought experiment. Right now, South America and Africa are moving away from each other because of new because of new plate material being created at the mid-Atlantic rift. Let's rewind it. Let's bring them back together. Let's bring them back together. We know that India is jamming into the Eurasian plate right now, causing the Himalayas to get higher and higher. What if we rewind that? Let's bring India back down towards Antarctica. Same thing with Australia. We have new, we have new plate, plate, uh, material being formed between Australia and Ar Antarctica that's making the continents move apart. Let's bring them back together. Let's rewind. Let's rewind the clock. Even North America. It's not as obvious from this diagram, but if you actually look at the GPS data, it becomes pretty obvious that North America right now is kind of moving in a in a counterclockwise rotation. So let's rewind it. Let's rewind it into a. Let's go back moving it in a clockwise direction. Let's, instead of Eurasia going further away from North America, let's bring it back together. And so what you can imagine is, is a reality where India, Australia are jammed down into South America, into, sorry, into Antarctica. South America and Africa are jammed together. North America is jammed in there. And essentially Eurasia is also jammed in. So it looks like they're all kind of would clump together if you go back a few hundred million years. And based on literally Based on just that thought experiment, you could imagine at one point the entire, all of the continents on the world were kind of merged into one supercontinent. And that supercontinent is called Pangaea. Pangaea. 
pan for entire or whole, and gia for coming from gea for the world. And it turns out that all of the evidence we've seen actually does make us believe that there was a supercontinent called, well, we call it Pangea now. Obviously, there, there probably weren't things on the planet calling it anything back then. Or well, there were things back then, but nothing, not things that would actually go and try to label continents that we know of. But all of the evidence tells us that Pangaea existed about 200 to 300 million years ago, roughly two, two, maybe 250 million, give or take, years ago. And I want to be clear: this was not the first. This was not the first supercontinent. To a large degree, it's kind of the first, the most recent supercontinent that it's easiest for us to construct because it, it was the most recent one. But we believe that there were other supercontinents before this. That if you go, if you rewind even more, that you're, you would have to kind of break up Pangaea and it would reform. But now going back in time, or that there were several supercontinents in the past that broke up, reformed, broke up, reformed. And the last time that we had a supercontinent was Pangaea, about 250 million years ago. And now it's broken up into our current day, into our current day uh, geography. Now I won't go into all of the detail why we believe that there was a Pangaea about 250 million years ago, or this diagram tells us about 225 million years ago, give or take. But I'll go into some of the interesting evidence. Uh, on a very high level, you have a lot of rock commonalities between things that would have had to combine during Pangaea. And probably the most interesting thing is the fossil evidence is the fossil evidence. There's a whole bunch of fossils, and here are examples of it, uh, from from species that were around between 200 and 300 million years ago. And their fossils are found in very specific place. This animal right here, Cynognathus. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Cynognathus. That this this animal's fossils are only found in this area of South America, a nice clean band here, and this part of Africa. So not only does South America look like it fits very nicely kind of into Africa, but the fossil evidence also makes it look like there was a nice clean band where this animal lived and where we find the fossils. So it, make, it really makes it seem like these were connected at least when this animal lived, maybe on the order of 250 million years ago. This species right over here, its fossils are found in this area. Let me do it in a color that has more contrast. In this area right over here, this plant, its fossils. Now this tries to connect a, a lot of dots between a lot of content. Its fossils are found in this entire area, across South South America, Africa, Antarctica, India, and Australia. And so not only not only does it look like the continents kind of fit together in a puzzle piece, not only do we get it to a configuration like this if we essentially just rewind the movement that we're seeing now, but the fossil evidence also kind of confirms that they fit together in this way. This, this animal right here, it, we find fossils on this nice stripe that goes from Africa through India all the way to Antarctica. Now this, this only gives us evidence of kind of the more the, the, the southern hemisphere of Pangaea. But there is other evidence. We find we find kind of continuing ro mountain chains between North America and Europe. We find uh, a rock evidence where you know just the way we see the fossils kind of line up nicely, we see common rock that lines up nicely between South America and Africa and other continents that were at once connected. So all of the evidence, as far as we can tell now, does make us think that there at one time was a Pangaea, and. For all we know, all the all the continents are going to keep moving, and maybe in at you know in a few hundred million years we'll we'll have another supercontinent. Who knows? Pangaea or Pangaea was a supercontinent that existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. It assembled from earlier continental units approximately 300 million years ago, and it began to break apart about 175 million years ago. In contrast to the present Earth and its distribution of continental mass, much of Pangaea was in the southern hemisphere and surrounded by a superocean. Pantalassa, Pangaea was the last supercontinent too have existed and the first to be reconstructed by geologists. The name is derived from ancient Greek Pan and Gaia. The concept was first proposed by Alfred Wegener, the originator of the theory of continental drift, in his 1912 publication The Origin of Continents. 
He expanded this hypothesis into his theory in his book The Origin of Continents and Oceans first published in 1915, in which he postulated that all the continents had formed a single supercontinent that he called the Ur-Continent. The name first occurs in the 1920 edition of Dient's Teum der Continent und Ozean, but only once, when Wegener refers to the ancient supercontinent as the Pangaea of the Carboniferous. Wegener used the Germanized form Panga but the term entered German and English scientific literature in the Latinized form Pangaea especially due to a symposium of the American Association of Petroleum Geologists in November 1926.